Well, our next guest, Christina Lamb, has interviewed some of the biggest newsmakers in the world, the likes of Benazir Bhutto or Augusto Pinochet. But it's her latest assignment that's causing the most interest. It's because she spent the year shadowing and writing I Am Malala, the official biography of Malala Yousafzai, the brave young activist who was shot by the Taliban. Our reporter Priyanka Jatt sat down with Christina and began by asking her about her first impressions of Malala. She has this public figure and she is incredibly brave. She's the bravest person that I know. Um, she risked her life for the idea that girls should go to school. Um, and she would be the first to say actually that she's not unique, that there are many other girls around the world fighting for the same rights but that she's been given this platform um, and she's determined to use it and I'm sure that she will but she still when she's at home <laughs> likes the things that teenage girls like. In retrospect through all these years of reporting do you feel there was any event or news story that that you can revisit and you would have done differently or perceived differently? Mm, I think what's become frustrating in my job is it's become more dangerous to be a journalist in many places. We're regarded as a target. We're getting very little reporting now from inside Syria because it's become too dangerous. I mean, for journalists trying to report it, um, they're regarded as targets by both sides, by some of the Islamist rebels and also by um, government forces too. So it's become extremely dangerous and you know frankly it's not being reported properly. You were part of a Benazir Bhutto rally which saw suicide attacks and deaths and mayhem. What was going on in your mind at that time? Benazir pointed out to me that the street lights were going out as we moved on which seemed very sinister. The, the security people were worried because there was supposed to be jamming of the mobile mm -hmm. phones and yet Mm -hmm. It was, we were all <laughs> on our phones. Um, and then, you know, the route they had chosen went under lots of flyovers and bridges which had people on top. And it seemed to me it would be very easy for someone to take a pot shot at mm -hmm. her. And I asked the security chief, you know, how are you, how can you protect her? And he, he literally just put his hands like this and said it's in God's hands, which. I didn't find that reassuring. Very reassuring. Um, no, but what's your first instinct when you heard about the bombs going off? Was your first instinct as a reporter that, okay, I need to record the scene happening no, around no, me? No. Is I mean, person? everything happened very quickly. Suddenly, there was this sound, um, like a, just a big boom. And actually, there were two bombs, and that was a small bomb to start with. Everybody fell to the ground. Um, and then people started getting up. And actually, I have been in suicide bombings before in Afghanistan, so I knew that often there is a second bomb that first is just to kind of get everyone stopped and in one place. So I actually shouted at people, don't get up. But before I could really say anything, it must have been within a minute, I think, there was a huge blast. Mm. And then everything was seemed to be on fire around this. There was all this orange flame, all the trees were on fire, and you could hear... Um, well, first, like it was silence, the, the music and everything stopped, and then you could hear people screaming, and then uh, after some time, sirens started. Um, quickly, I realized I was fine, um, but three people had been killed on top of the bus. There was nothing you could do for them. You, I mean, they were clearly dead. Um, and then everybody else on top was just trying to get off as quickly as possible. We were very worried that because we were on top of a bus with a big petrol tank and there were flames everywhere that it would catch fire. <laughs> so the priority was to get off as quickly as possible. Um, and once I was off, then, you know, no, wondering where Benazir was because she had gone downstairs mm. to uh, work on her speech that she was due to give when we finally arrived at the Jinnah Mausoleum. So she disappeared. She'd actually been taken out quickly. Um, and so, you know, really, you know, it was complete confusion and everybody was just trying to, to get out.